everybody. Welcome to Real Life Sci-Fi with Wade and Willie. I'm Wade. I'm Willie. This is a podcast about the paranormal and contemporary mythology. Join us on patreon.com slash real life sci-fi for access to two bonus episodes a week, video feeds, and more. Also, tune in Monday nights to twitch.tv slash real life sci-fi. We hang out and we bring some ideas for this upcoming thing that might not ever happen. It's a narrative podcast called Parabnormal where a Willie and a Wade analog uh, find Bigfoot and shit like that. So it's fun. That's on twitch.tv slash real life sci-fi. Let's welcome aboard the SSRLSF. It's our new friend. He's a singer and songwriter. The album is called Southern Galactic. It's out now. Get it anywhere. It's Caleb Hutchinson. Thanks for what having up? me, gentlemen. It's so great to Dude, be here. Thanks for doing it. Man, I'm I'm stoked. And also, if you need any help finding Bigfoot, I know him personally. All right. Well, because you're in Nashville. And so yeah. is there a lot of forests out there? Do they yeah, have we got, skunk we, ape or do they have Bigfoot? We got some woods. I was just thinking of my cousin, Ricky. He's, you know, he's kind of... <laughs> No, yeah, I've been out in the woods. <laughs> I've seen some things, but you know, I've lived a hard life to have such a good-looking face. It doesn't really show the the years and the turmoil <laughs> I put myself through. I hide it well, but I've I've seen some stuff. Well, speaking of the stuff that you've seen, how into the world of like the paranormal and and, and conspiracy theories are you? I think what it is is I'm I'm that perfect generation where like I played outside as a kid, and then when I was like ten, eleven, twelve. I found YouTube. So I found videos of like conspiracy theories, paranormal stuff. And so I feel like I've, I'm fairly well versed, but I'm sure I'm not at the, at the peak level like you gentlemen are, but I can hang. <laughs> well, I'm not at all. I don't know any of this stuff. Willie's the expert. I'm just along for the ride. I'm just a, a skeptic of everything. So I think that's what allows me to, I'm probably somewhere between y'all. Because most of the time, my conclusion is probably, but I'll never know anyway. I do that a lot. Yeah. I so, think the audience is, is tired of that standpoint, honestly, because I'm always like, okay, so what? It's not going right. to matter to me. I'll think whatever's most entertaining. Whatever y'all believe, I will believe firmly the opposite. Well, here's the thing. You said you were maybe in between us. We have something here on the show called the Wow Scale. Wow Scale. And mm -hmm. it's a five question quiz. At the end of the quiz, I will give you a score between zero and five. If you're more of a zero, you're more of a weight. If you're more of a five, you're more of a willy. Okay. Are you ready to be weighed on the wow scale? Weigh me. First question, three parter. Do you believe in aliens? If so, have they visited Earth? If so, have they visited Earth in the last 300 years? I was just having this alien talk. I believe it's plausible. I think I'm more into the idea of like interdimensional beings that uh, I, I think I prefer that over beings from another planet that are as intelligent or more intelligent than us that have came here and, and just kind of messed around. If there was a chart of like strongly disagree, strongly agree, I'm probably yeah. I'm probably a soft agree. If you think of these aliens as interdimensional beings, which is fine, you can define them however you want. Yeah. Do you, you think that they've that they've crossed over into our dimension 100 percent, yeah okay second question ghosts i'll say yeah also i'm i'm not trying to over explain my answers i i'm of the mind that like you will never like grandma's not walking around your house that's my personal opinion but i yeah. do think that like spirits exist kind of tying into the the first question a little bit but yeah i, I think they're are things that we can't see. The problem is the the old definitions are so religious based that they don't apply to what could be actually happening. You know, mm. that's that's what I think. It's like you look at like quantum mechanics and whatnot, and there and and parallel dimensions and whatnot. Maybe it was described as your grandma, but it's actually just an energy that echoes the same thing. Or or yeah, some old whore. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> your grandma, it's some old whore. Man, I I used I grew up in this. Um, in Georgia and I had some buddies and um, my buddy Jared, it was very like, it was a joke. He was like, Oh yeah, we got a ghost. And we named him Bobby. This is what got me like, yeah, there's something. Cause we would sit in his living room and it would be just us. And we'd hear like knocking or something in the hallway, in the back room. And he'd go, Bobby, knock it off. And then it would stop. 
And I was like, I don't think you're talking to a guy named Bobby, just so you know, but you're talking to something. Wow. That's it's cool. not, it's kind of nice that the ghost was like, well, I guess my name's Bobby now. Fuck. Yeah. It. He's like, mm. you know, he's a, he's a Casper. We really like that guy until he eats them. <laughs> what? Georgia, any, any other kind of like spooky? I mean, Georgia's like old. We're from Colorado. And so there's mm. not like it's old, but it's not like very old. Like we don't have any of the East Coast history where like a lot of the ghost shit happens. Is yeah. there a lot of ghost stuff in Georgia? Savannah is like a really big haunted city. They do like haunted carriage rides. And, you know, back in like the Civil War, Sherman's March to the Sea all ended there. A lot of things were burned. A lot of people died. So like Savannah's got a creepy vibe to it. And we have like yeah. battlefields and, um, oh, yeah. you know, like a lot of uh, Native American landmarks and stuff. So, yeah, I, I think there's there's a good amount of activity going the countryside's on. Countryside's covered in blood. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we got some spookiness. But any like any rural community. Like if it's 2 a.m. and you're on like a dirt road and there's nothing around, you feel like there's a demonic presence. At least I do. That spooks me out all the time. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I don't believe in any of it, so I talk myself out of it. But I've definitely uh, gone to sleep with the covers over my head just because I heard a noise. Yeah, I mean, the covers help. That's really all we need. It's just a, a security blankie. blanket. Right? We need horse blinders because I'm like, if I keep looking, I'm going to keep looking. Yeah. <laughs> That would be even scarier if you couldn't see. I wonder if that's like a power play. Like, let's say you walked in and there was a spirit, like a, a person, a something, and you just pretended you couldn't see them. Would they be like, what the? I just, I, can't, I hit the reveal button. Yeah, I'm not doing this, it right. This guy's walking past me. If you were just like, hey, what's up, man? And then just walk past him. You know, maybe that's the secret. Yeah, I was a doing big, the, energy the move, I think. dishes the other night and I... I just imagine, because like in the reflection of the glass in front of me is this hole we have in our kitchen, so you can see in the living room. Mm. And I just imagine a face being on the other side there. I was like, "Oh fuck!" And like, I got the goosebumps so bad, and I'm like, "Am I, am I now like willing something to be there?" Because I keep checking, and I'm like, "Just stop!" And I just said this out loud as I'm doing this. She's like, "Get out of here!" Yeah, I think I even sang it because I was just like, "Well, I'm just fucking ignore it. Like, get out of my head." Like Dude. you were so embarrassed for yourself that you had to sing it so that it, <laughs> so that it would be less embarrassing. It just, that just brought back a like repressed memory. I remember when I was a kid, I used to always sleep with like the blinds in my room up so I could see out the window. And I remember I was probably like seven or eight years old and I had a friend over that was spending the night and he was like, you're going to you know, put the blinds down while we sleep. And I'm like, no, why would we? And he's like, well, what if a face pops up in the window? And like my house, my room wasn't on like the bottom floor. It was a good 15 feet up. And sure. from that moment, I was like, well, I'm never sleeping with the window like accessible <laughs> again because I've just pictured Lucifer's face just popping up. And now I can't get it out of my head. To this day, if something happens there, yeah. boys, I'm running. That's how I'll I am sing. too. I can't. I can't look out. I can't see window in my room. Yeah, curtains. I've, are uh, yeah, I I've always closed the curtains. My childhood home faced a big empty field, and so it was like uh, we we gotta close these, man. Like who knows what's out there? I want some pervert we, coyote looking at us. I grew up in a trailer park, and we used to we had a window watcher. You look get outside, and there'd be like a whole bunch of cigarettes outside our bedroom window. Yeah. And I was like, I thought you said that was like, your dad. Well, I, I kept going in my head, is this a stranger or is this my dad watching us? And I, I don't know the answer. Either but... way, it's kind of sweet. Like it's it's <laughs> endearing. <laughs> you know? Like you can't talk to us, but he knows us. It's a neighborhood watch. That's all it is. <laughs> just checking in. It was Santa Claus. Yeah, he just took the hood out of there. It's just neighbor watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A neighbor's watch. Now you already you already said uh that Bigfoot is your cousin. Yep. But do you believe in Bigfoot in general? Yes. It's a loose conviction just because I wouldn't doubt it. I think there's probably so many like species that are still around that we don't think are. But the bottom of the ocean freaks me out with that in particular, like all the, mm -hmm. the Meg and yeah. all that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I would be surprised if the government hadn't put him in some holding cell somewhere to run tests on. Like the idea that he's evaded anybody is kind of far-fetched. 
like that, that he's just so good at running through the woods that drones and radar and all this stuff hasn't been able to get him. Um, but yeah, probably. Okay. Psychics. Yeah. I don't know about like palm reading, but like, there's probably people that pick up on some, some waves out there. And have, have you ever gone to a psychic? No, 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 never. I, but also. So you don't believe in them that much. Yeah. But I would, well, I would, I would never walk up to a psychic and be like, that's BS dude. No way. I'm like, right. cool. Yeah. Maybe you do know something, but I'm not going to pay. But that could call. be just because you're not confrontational. I would never do that to anyone. Oh, I, I, I love the... to yell at people doing their job. It's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason why I haven't gone to a psychic is because of the same reason where you said your friend sleeping. I was like, what if a head popped in the window? I'm like, there's a chance that this psychic could say something to me that would just change my mind. Yeah. For my anxiety. Yeah, that's like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. That's the thing too, with that. It's like, what if you are told something that changes your trajectory in a way that it wasn't meant to, or, I don't know. I, I feel like, like you said, anxiety, I have enough of the like constant questioning of every decision I make and what it's all for that. I don't need someone to look at my palm and be like, you should invest into Dogecoin. You know, it's, <laughs> get, get into crypto. Uh, last question. Do you believe that we are living in a simulation theory or do you believe in any of these versions of the simulation theory? I, I don't buy into the the simulation. If it is the case, there's no point in me knowing but I would just like to think that this is the the first plane of existence for what we know as reality and not a someone in reproduction of it, replication. But maybe I'm sitting in a chamber right now with a feeding tube and just, you know, watching a movie. I have no clue. Yeah, or maybe you real. don't exist at all. Maybe you're just maybe you're just code based on some other guy. Or maybe I am God. It's gotta be something in between. It could the two. be God too. But I if you're be... God, then what am I? You're God. If that's the case, then we are all the universe experiencing ourselves and you are me and I'm you. But again, a little far fetched for me. I actually do believe that. That's my new thing. If you're trying mm. to teach a God how to respect the universe, will they just have to go be everybody? I don't know, because when we get into the God conversation, that's a big one. But like if God is omnipotent and like all knowing, all powerful, I don't know. That's probably well, a little too deep for me to dip my chip in, honestly. You're fr you're you're from the Bible Belt. Like, how, what what's your relationship with religion? Are you are you religious? Yeah, I would, I'm a Christian. Like, I believe in like the God God of the Bible and Jesus. It makes sense to me, but like, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not picketing or like talking on the street or anything. Which you're not an extremist. You're just like sure. That's that's I, what I believe. I have my beliefs and things that I tell my close friends, but I'm not like out here arguing with anyone. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I, yep. I have so much of me that is so aware of how little I really know. And so I'm never going to like fight with someone over what we believe. Like the, the main thing to me will always be being a, a kind person and, a, and treating people well. But I, I, my personal belief is uh, Christianity. Yes. And I will. Well, we're going to gonna fight tonight. You're going to have to fight <laughs> us tonight. Well, what's funny, and I've never spoken about this at all, but I kind of, uh, it, not in like a big way, but fell away from it for quite a few years. If you'd interviewed me a year ago and asked me, I may give you more of an I don't know answer. I think like mm -hmm. in the past year or so, I've had to kind of redefine and reapproach like God and religion in general. And I wasn't going off of like, this is what my parents taught me. I like went from my own yeah, course yeah. of action, talked to people from other religions and agnostics and diehard atheists that there were, were worm food. And the, the conclusion that I was eventually led to was Christianity. Was that spawned by any kind of like event in your life or did you just come back to it? This time last year, I, I was in, um, I did like a mental health intensive type thing. Uh, mm -hmm. my whole life, I'd never grown up doing like therapy or any of those kinds of things and, um, just got to like a really, really low point and just decided to go all in on it. And it was really interesting because during that process, and I know it's like kind of similar in like AA and stuff too, where it's like the relationship to your higher power, whatever that is to you. Yeah. And I'd never thought of God that way of like, oh, well, what can my higher power be? And I realized like 
I think, and maybe I'll change my mind at some point, but what I kind of got from that was I had gotten my mind in such a position about like thinking about God and the way I looked at God from growing up in church and being in a religious community that I was at a point where I was like, well, God hates me. God hates what I've done. And if I know God the way I think and I've acted the way I've acted and been how I've been, dude's got to be wanting me to die too. You know, it can't just be me. And because you were, you were, you were fed the, the, the really, um, I just had the word and I forgot it. The, Hellfire the, and brimstone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's, I've always looked at it as just like any other relationship, like with a spouse or something. And it's like, if you had a wife and you were like, I love you with all my heart. I want you to have every part of me. And then you acted like they didn't exist for four years. You might be scared to come home. <laughs> so I think I was just yeah. like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to this guy. You know, I'm terrified. Yeah. And I got to that point and I could go further and further, but essentially like in two weeks time from the moment I was like, I want to get help with this. And I didn't even know that was a possibility. I thought I was just flawed and bad and was destined to just be this way or die. But the moment that I was like, I need some help with this. I had like no money, no connections to anyone in like therapy or any of those services. And it all happened in like two weeks I got help with like financially out of nowhere. The place I went had like a six month waiting list. And I was like, honestly, I was in a dark enough place where I was like, I don't know if I have six months of like living like this. And then they were like, Hey, someone just canceled. Can you do two days from now? Wow. And so I remember I had this moment when I was at that place where it just kind of hit me of like, if I, I believe in God and, and something greater than me, and I've been kind of operating under this assumption that he hates me and given up on me, doesn't care about me. And I was just like, in the past, like two weeks, all this stuff came together in such a, a powerful way for me, like 10 different things that I would have been like, that's the reason this is impossible. They all just went away. And so that for me was like God shaking me and being like, what do you know? Like, you really think you know how I think or like what this is all about? you're a child, you know? And, and so that was kind yeah. of the message in there. And, you know, that's, that was the big shift for me. And that made God more real to me than like he had ever had had been. Well, you predicted you would be in between us. The results are in and you're a straight up five. You're a straight up Willie. Oh, wow. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Look at us. <laughs> All right. I know who's, I know whose team I'm on now. <laughs> And should that's why I, I've oh, come so, to evangelize. So I'm going to actually mail you guys some pocket Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, hit us with that topic. Tonight on Real Life Sci-Fi, selling your soul to the devil. Is it just an expression or have any musicians actually done it? Let's talk about who may have sold their soul to the devil and what proof, if any, there is tonight on Real Life Sci-Fi. Yeah, so there's Robert a new Johnson. Beyonce. Beyonce is doing the. I don't want to. I don't want to jump the gun if if this is something that you want to talk about. But like, isn't Beyonce doing a a Renaissance tour right now? And isn't that part of the whole? Uh, well, let me just ask you. Uh, are are we are we getting into um illuminati with this or uh, sure. or not we got to be I, this is yeah <laughs> well, i feel like uh i feel like we're going into classic rockers more so than okay than than any of the new school stuff with the music videos cuz the music videos to me is all illuminati I've, i i and, and, and you know it's weird i should have been more specific but i'm like yeah i'm just talking about some classic old rockers who who have said these things basically the new yeah. school world they don't say anything about it you just see symbology illuminati shit you see the death and rebirth in their music videos but that's but that's not where we're going i have okay. some points i have i have quite a few points nice um, and, and and we can go into those but i yeah i, I just looked into like like oh, you know yeah. the first one that we're going to talk about is you know, Eric Clapton sang a song called Crossroads. Crossroads. It was a cover. 
of a guy named made, Robert Johnson. Uh, Robert Johnson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, have you ever seen uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh, of course. It's that's, amazing. that's kind of got the reference to the, the crossroads, the soul selling. But yeah, the Robert Johnson uh, is where I first, uh, to me, I think that's like, at least in America, that's kind of the basis of selling your soul to the devil for talent. So this is when he was in Cream, yeah? That, that was just the cover. So the, the, the who he was covering was Robert Johnson. They say oh, he got was, it. the reason why they say that is because, you know, he played the harmonica and then he kind of disappeared for two years and came back as one of the best musicians of all time. And And, and a lot of these people have said that to him, Delta Blues style. He only recorded songs for seven months in his life. Yeah. And he recorded 29 songs. Yeah, go. You, you can jump in if you want. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. catch. Yeah. One of his songs, mentioned. I think it's called Hellhounds or Hellhounds on My Trail, but it was one of his last songs, I believe. And it was about Hellhounds being on his trail, which is like, I think that's also, I could be wrong, but isn't that part of like the 27 Club thing? Didn't he die at 27? I think he was 27. But I think that was like the whole the whole concept of selling your soul and also the 27 club thing is part of that, I think. But it's like that you sell your soul to Satan for talent, power um, in the Bible. Satan tempted Jesus with like he took him up on a mountain and said, look at the world like I can give you all this. So the idea is like the devil comes to you. He's like, I can give you everything you dreamed of. I can give you talent, fans, fame, money. But like your ass is mine basically. Yeah. And so the whole hellhound thing is that um, like the hell you can hear the hellhounds coming for you and that they drag you to hell basically. And it's supernatural has a great depiction of it. One of my favorite shows. I feel like <laughs> if you try to get out of it, then you die young. But yeah. if you do what you told, then you live for a long time. Cause there's some guys that have, that are, that are fucking still around. Jimmy Page is still alive. What's yeah, up with yeah. that? I mean, we, we'll get into Jimmy. He's got a lot of stuff. What? But, Jimmy <clears throat> Page? He yeah. he bought Crowley's house. Alester Crowley, Alistair, however you say it. Yeah, Alistair. It's a he, like, castle. Yeah, but it's like where, where he did all of his like witchcraft and like blatant yeah. devil worship. Did he so, buy it because of that or was it just awesome? I think it's because he, of it. Jimmy Page was big into the occult, but he wasn't a preacher of it. He wasn't trying to get, he even says, you know, he's not trying, wasn't trying to get anybody to believe anything. He's like, well, hey, Led if, Zeppelin's if you, music is like completely innocuous, right? It's about uh, like. A lot of their stuff is very into the occult. Like, look at that album that had, they had an album that had crop circles on it, you know? And um, um, Stair Stairway to Heaven, if you play it backwards, uh, that, that was... You know what? I just, I just revealed myself to be one of those guys who listens to Rage Against the Machine, but uh, has no idea what the message is. Because oh, I man. love Le I love Led Zeppelin be just because of John Bonham. I'm a drummer, and so like yeah. I loved Led Zeppelin because of John Bonham. But I I never really listened to lyrics of songs, so I don't really know what anything's about. The, the big Zeppelin thing that I'm aware of is like the backmasking, and I, I think yeah. uh, Willie was about to get to that. But that's where it gets crazy. Those were the videos I watched on YouTube. And like would listen to Stairway to Heaven backwards and be like, I can't listen to this anymore. He'll get what, inside. It's what weird back, because what's, wait, hang you, on, what's backmasking? Backmasking is uh and I think me personally, I think it's been done as like part of the the appeal, like the Beatles did it too, where you play a song backwards God, and hear a message. Dead. Yeah, I yeah, Paul is dead and all that, but the the stairway to heaven one, if if you play it backwards, it says like here's to my sweet Satan and um really there was yeah it, like it six, so six, six. it's weird because um now you can tell someone that something says something and when they hear it it's easier for them to hear yeah but the the lyrics of this are just so weirdly specific that it's like i how can i hear all of this and it sounds more like a song backwards than it does forward you know because right. forward it th there's all these fucking weird lyrics that are like it's like a scathing get. pitchfork review of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm specifically talking about Stairway to Heaven, you know, where it's just like uh, there's weird fuck, there's weird English lyrics in it, but backwards, there's some weird fucking satanic shit. I'm I've but always like, been of the mind that that's like borderline promotional. That, mm -hmm. that some of that was there purposefully, it, yeah. especially with the Beatles when they are blatantly playing you reversed audio in the song as you're listening forward yep. like, wow, uh -huh. what's that so i i think a lot of it is <laughs> is uh like i'm gonna go buy the record i'm gonna buy the album so i can play it backwards sure you know? 
but yeah. also could be pledging their allegiance um to lucifer we don't know yeah and you know why why is sergeant pepper's album a funeral you know and, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not going to get too much into that, but I'm like the craziest thing about the Sergeant Pepper's album is that every single person that's pictured in that on on that funeral is um with all the roses uh, and shit, the flower yeah. garden in front of them. Uh huh. Yeah, they're all celebrities. There's a whole bunch of pictures of people on it, and the only weird person on there that stands out from that is a person who wrote a book about four people that left on a boat. And one of them died. And when they came back, they pretended like he was still alive. Was it a it was yellow like, submarine? Was that on that album? No, right? I think it was that a was vessel. Like... The other the other Beatles one is Abbey Road. Uh, the picture of them walking across the street. There was the album cover because Paul has his shoes off. And I think George is dressed in all denim. So he's supposed to be like a grave digger. I could be having the yeah, guys yeah. wrong. No, that's right. The first guy's got a white suit on. So he's like the, he's the preacher, re- right? Yeah, a yeah, preacher. Undertaker. The, those those boys were good. That's that's my first hot take. The Beatles were pretty good. And it's an so interesting much... take. I haven't heard that about the Beatles. <laughs> a lot of guys disagree. It's kind of a niche opinion. They're they're not a very well known band. But um, no, I, I that's always been something I wrestled with. Of, of, and with the Beatles especially, I feel like that's more promotional because there's nothing about it that's like they're all like hinting at Paul having died in a car accident. And, you know, now he's like this fake dude, but the, the Zeppelin stuff is where it's like blatantly talking, like kind of demonic and the words don't make sense that they're saying when you play them backwards, they like yeah. Willie said, Here, it sounds here's like this clear. backwards one. I'll say it for the, this is on uh, stairway to heaven. Oh, here's to my sweet Satan. The one whose little path would make me sad. Whose power is Satan. He will give those with him 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer, sad Satan. It does make me scared. Like, I just put out this album, Southern Galactic, and I'm like, if I sat and just played the whole thing backwards, is there ever a part where it sounds like I'm like, Satan is my buddy? Right. right? The, the here's to my sweet Satan thing, even the rest of it, um, because I've listened to it a bit, I've read like the words. The one, but that when he says, Here's to my sweet Satan, it's clear, it's like, Here's to my sweet Satan, like it's clear as day. And it, that one, that was the only one that has ever like actually spooked me, you know, because it really it sounds like Robert Plant just saying it. Yeah. What, uh-huh. what is he, what is he saying forward though? Because like, how would you even, if there's like, a bustle in your hedgerow, don't be alarmed. No, it's just that's when he spring says it? clean for the May Queen. I think that's the part. Spring right? and what does May that queen? mean? Some people think that that's like referring to getting aroused. So, Who's the May Queen? Is that I don't know, of, man, because they're the British. Demons? I don't understand any British references. And also, like uh, those guys that are so into the occult, like what are these deities, beings, metaphors? Like I don't know anything about that stuff. Right, so, and well, when you get into the Illuminati, their whole thing, is, you know, picture all those symbols that are a word that work backwards and forwards the um, word illuminati there's art of it to where if it's backwards it still says illuminati and looks exactly the same like, yeah that's a fuck. that's a typography that's like Man. a kind of thing and it's i just saw a video of the rapper Lil uzi vert and i think it was exo tour life but it was one of his like massive songs and he was at like one of his shows and he's like all right y'all came here tonight so i'm gonna let y'all know like y'all are going to hell with me and he's like, y'all didn't even know, like you've been listening to the yeah. song and you didn't even know what it was doing to you or something like that. And I mean, like the, all the, the like Lil Uzi Vert and Travis Scott and like all these people have upside down crosses on fire on their stage. And even if it's just like an art thing of like, oh, it worked with these rap or with these uh, rock stars to like mm-hmm. hint at some dark stuff. So we'll do it mm-hmm. too. Cause that's rock and roll. Like maybe that's what's going on. But it's also just like a really, if I didn't believe in anything, no God, no hell, no nothing, like the full John Lennon treatment, imagine, like, it would still be weird to me to be like, let's just promote this stuff that like yeah, every, yeah. every religion, every person with like a spiritual life fears, like, let's jump on that because that'll be cool. And why, why do so many people jump onto it? Because there's so many people change after they've after they get famous where they're yeah. 
their shit completely changed. And I, I don't mean their music necessarily, but the just the music video is where they're specifically the person dying in the video and then they get reborn and come back with like just fucking demonic shit everywhere. And it's like, what you chose this? But a lot of that is is up to interpretation. I mean, like you could show me a million Beyonce videos and I would never think like Oh, she's worshiping Satan. She's just dancing around. I don't know what this fucking means. Whatever the fuck, I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. The, the I think the the Satan worship stuff and the Illuminati go hand in hand. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want to lose money one day. You know, well, I don't want to diminish the value of my soul when the Illuminati comes knocking. <laughs> we should talk about just literally how this would happen. Robert Johnson uh, went to a crossroads, brought his guitar, a large, a large figure took the guitar from him, tuned it, played a song and gave it back to him. That's, that's like the story. And then when he got it back, he was amazing. It's a, it's an easy myth tale. You know, these guys, these guys claim that they've all cited his lyrics and musicianship as being big influences on them. Bob Dylan, Keith Richards, Robert Plant, but he was living on a plantation. And he was instructed to take his guitar to the crossroads. And some people debate on where these crossroads are. Some people think it's in uh, uh, Clarksville, Mississippi. And some people think it's in Memphis, Tennessee. The story of selling your soul actually came from another guy before him, Tommy Johnson. Tommy Johnson, he claimed to have sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads for his guitar mastery. And so after these guys... Who who who's it after? We'll, we'll, you know. We'll so just these two guys I never heard of sold their soul, like. But they they diminishing returns. People who also sold their soul, right? So I don't give so a let's fuck do... if I if I influence people. If I'm they didn't have Instagram I'm... back then, you know. If if Robert Johnson had an Instagram account, he would have had a hundred million followers. Yeah, yeah. You know? People would be skateboarding to it on TikTok and shit. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> like. There's there's something to be said there too cuz I mean that was there were way less like well-known musicians during that time. Right. So that, that's the, the compelling part to that story is that like he wasn't very good and then like he made the deal cuz all these people that people nowadays speculate about being satanic or illuminati or whatever had a great deal of talent. Like the idea mm -hmm. that Beyoncé was not a great singer but then she did some kind of thing and became Beyonce, you yeah. know, for a lifetime of earthly pleasure, followed by an eternity in hell. Like, I don't know. That's the crazy thing with those stories is that they like didn't have the natural talent. And I think, think nowadays the, the thing is way more that like, oh, if you're good and you get really famous, then eventually you get led into some spooky room and the guys are like, we can make this times a hundred. You know, if you just, you know, give us some of your blood and um come put on this cloak and then we'll sign some stuff and you'll be rich tomorrow you know but but then there's also like the malcolm gladwell Ten Thousand hours thing where it's like maybe maybe these two johnson guys just weren't they just didn't they were good enough to sort of be on the radar but like they just practiced enough to to then become good i yeah. I'm, and, and i'm thinking of like i know he's been canceled and everything but louis ck was like a hack fucking tour comic and 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 then something clicked in him and is like oh i can call my kids assholes and that's funny and, and then he got huge and then he like jerked off in front of girls and but i just mean it's not unheard of that like you can even say larry david to a little i i'm sorry i'm doing like too much tv entertainment stuff but like yeah. larry david yeah he was successful with seinfeld but then I don't. I uh, fuck. I'm losing. I'm losing the thread of my point. But I don't know. What, what What are some other examples? The situation that's so different about the people that like sold their soul or whatever. It's all happened in their twenties, or like they're young, or they're new to mm. it. Like with Louis C.K., it's like maybe he was not the best comedian for twenty years. Right. And after twenty years of being on stage and not being the best, he figured it out. But mm. like the the Robert Johnsons and like Led Zeppelin, these guys were like 19 when they were first starting and they were how they were. So th I think that's why that's a more compelling conversation of like, you didn't have 20 years to practice this and then you're True. so good. We think it's the devil. Like you just yeah. popped out this good. Is Kurt Cobain on this list? 
he's in the 27 uh, club but i don't i don't well know. that's kind of why we're, i brought him up yeah. and then like Jimi hendrix and stuff like the people in the 27 club they're not necessarily involved yeah. in this yeah okay. I don't no think so. it, it's just really uh you know people that 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 kind of claim it so it. so like we'll, let's just finish off jimmy page because we brought him up yeah he was big into the occult he bought Alistair what about Crowley's robert castle. plant was robert plant into it or uh he he wrote a lot of the lyrics you know and and i i think the whole band was was into the occult a little bit and and the story from that backwards thing was that they basically made a deal in the shed so like they were all together i think the whole band that's the creepiest part of those lyrics is the shed thing yeah i never want to be in a shed yeah, and especially not with the devil. <laughs> not with the devil. <laughs> yeah. It's I think like the 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 thing the logic of this that uh, like it's hard for me to digest is in order to believe that this like demonic power is is going to transfer to you, you're going to get this power. You have to believe in like this evil or like this force. And especially if the lyrics are about the torture shed you're acknowledging like you don't think this is like Jesus offering you talent just because he loves you so much. Like, you know, it's like something dark. And so if you believe that, then you're probably fairly likely to believe in like the opposite, the goodness. And so the idea that if you believe in Satan, then you have to believe in like hell mm -hmm. and, and life after death. And so that it would just be a hard sell for me to be like, I'm going to give you uh, even if it's not 27, I'll give you a hundred years of life. You'll be the most well-known, talented, richest person. And then after that for eternity, which is never ending, it'll be cruel suffering, but you're going to have like a really kick-ass life to, to make that deal. I bet you half these people don't believe in the eternal afterlife. So it's like the deal doesn't sound as legit. Like, Hey, you want to learn how to, you want to be a master? Like then, then just let me be in charge. You know, it's, a, it's, I, a, it's a yeah it's like a catch-22 where you're like um sure make me the best guitar player ever whatever but then you are and you're like oh fuck I, yeah i would immediately if i didn't believe it i was like yeah sure like i'll drink the blood or whatever like rituals yeah. going on in the shed like this guy's nothing but this this sounds fun and cool then you wake up as one of the greatest guitar players in the world you have to be like shit i better just enjoy this while it lasts yeah well yeah. and so let's get into bob dylan right bob dylan is still alive mm -hmm. and and he on breaking a, news he, breaking news bob dylan has not died yet as of wait this is it is is uh is the rolling stones guitar player he's still alive isn't he keith richards will never yeah. die but that's yeah because, that guy won't die that guy definitely signed a deal with the devil he had oh, i think he signed with god yeah no he's i feel happy about richards <laughs> <laughs> so in 1963 bob dylan recorded a song called talking devil right and he introduced the song by saying this is all about where the devil is some people say there is no devil although the song is of questionable quality and was never performed again is set forth the conviction i'm just reading uh, a conviction about the crucial importance of the devil in this world to which dylan has adhered all of his life right he says uh the song opens uh with a demonic nature it says well sometimes you can't see him so good when he hides his head neath a snow white hood so that people think it's like ku klux klan second verse well he wants you to hate and wants you to fear wants you to fear something that's not even there. He'll give you your hate and he'll give you his lies. He'll give you the weapons to run out and die. And this just sounds like a soul. guy that I worked with. <laughs> that could have been him, man. You're never going to convince me with poetry because poetry yeah, is yeah. analogies so, and metaphors. And so in interviews, um, th these are some of the things that he said, because in the two thousands, people were asking him like, why, why are you still touring? <laughs> you know, like you don't need to tour. Uh, and, endorphins and what did he, he say i'm sorry I, I shouldn't answer for sir bob dylan somebody's like why are you why are you still performing live and he's like it all goes back to the destiny thing this is a this is him talking i made a bargain with it a long time ago and i'm holding up my end and somebody's like with who and he smiled and he laughed and he said with the chief commander of this earth and the world we can't see but he definitely has on occasion said that he yeah well you know i sold my soul you know i did the thing I have yeah. I have a point about Dylan in particular, because Dylan um, 
also became a Christian and made Christian records and wrote a lot about like Christ. Um, and also, even if you don't rock with Jesus, those albums are insanely good. Some of my favorite Bob Dylan stuff. Which albums um, are they? Uh, there's one that's called like Slow Train Coming. There's, what's the other one? There's there's like a couple. What, what, what era? Uh, it was, I think it was after he went electric. It was, it was after that. Um, okay. I don't, I'm sorry. I didn't prepare my Bob Dylan. No, no, it's well okay. So, so like early nineties, like, like kind of probably older than that. Like he, he had some songs that were like blatantly about Jesus and about like having dreams about like Jesus. And, and there's, there's all kinds of, I mean, it's true. Like Christian, how weak was the foundation I was standing upon? You showed me I was blinded, but that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so like when he's talking about the, the, the chief and all that, like part of me, let's play into the idea that he sold his soul to Satan for sure. fame and, and great lyrics and stuff. What if, you know, he came to Christ and, you know, believing in the devil, you got to believe like the big G, the top dog, you know, God, Yahweh. And so maybe he's just like, look, you get me out of this mess. I will tell everyone about how great you are and I will play until you call me home. So like maybe because it's hard for me to believe that he would make those like Christian records and that like Satan would be cool with it in the Have first you played. Place. That's the thing. Has anybody played the Christian records backwards? <laughs> Don't do this At to any me. Rate, dude. Um, I, we, uh, I will say for, for say me, Jesus Christ right this. now. And it sounds exactly like anal sex. Mm. <laughs> Blasphemy. I'm wondering if um, so in order for me to believe in something in this realm, it makes me go, OK, I, I just cannot believe that our definitions of gods or Lucifer or anything are anything close to the reality of what their existence or what they are, are, you know, even even saying all knowing, all powerful, that used to just rock my world going like, what does that mean? I don't understand the universe. What if there was an interdimensional being who this is so uh, late in the podcast for you to bring this up go right, on i'm well, sorry uh because here's my thing no matter who you pray to no matter what religion you pray to even if it's even if it's lucifer it seems that prayers get answered uh for everyone and it makes me go like what what is this is 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 our is it that our as humans and our existence and our connection to the universe, when you pray for something, it actually, there actually is a power and we're giving away this power to these things that we believe in when it's all actually in us. Or what if there was a, an interdimensional being that, that if you agreed to, and now I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll just say a couple sentences and then we, we don't need to go really on with it. But like, if you think of the Illuminati and you think of if there is a power to that, what if, there was something claiming to be Satan or God or whatever in all these realms, the power that they had was to get all these other people that believed in them to, to give you your power. Um, mm. So like, like just the connection of like, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. That's loose and that, but I'm like, I, I feel like everybody who prays gets what they want and it doesn't matter what you believe in. So it makes me believe in, anything specific you think less. everyone who prays gets what they want dude all these guys that are talking about selling their soul to the devil they well, yeah, are yeah great. if you if you look up famous musicians sure i like talk to talk to fucking inner city black catholics well m i feel like most of the world has been blinded by being by to being creative and so what they're praying for are just things that uh you know like what you if you're praying for money, that that doesn't. All right, they, all right. Well, Here's where he spins it into creativity is the most important thing. Caleb, get us out of here. What, <laughs> you 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 looked up some more stuff. Is is there anyone we haven't mentioned that you want to talk about before we end? No, I mean I think it's a I think it's a popular thing nowadays. Just like a lot of these rappers and even like Billie Eilish and all these people that have all this weird spooky imagery. It's hard to say if that's just for the the cosmetic appeal and the the vibe, or if it really is them pledging their allegiance to Satan. Um, I will say, that, like, I know I'm doing the opposite of what you just told me to do, but I think like no, the, go on, go on the, as long as you want. The whole like, it, from my understanding of like Christianity and the God of the Bible, 
is like when when Christians pray, it's not really supposed to be like, God, I want to be rich and I want I want a million dollars and a hot right. wife and a yacht. Like the the Christian prayer and like the prayers Jesus said were always very much like, let your will be done. Like your plan for me is better than my plan for me. The the reason that it's spookier if you're praying or wishing for or manifesting or whatever the kids are calling it for money and wealth and you'll do anything for it. It's not to me. I think that definitely puts you on the radar of like the people looking for that genie, at least from like the Christian perspective, God is not like genie God, but mm-hmm. Satan that's Satan's whole thing is like, mm-hmm. I can offer you, you power and wealth and everything you've ever wanted. And like, that's historically found in, in, pretty much every piece of literature that refers to a devil or Satan or any of those things. So that's where it's like, it's like, obviously people, there are people who are famous like Christians and Muslims and all that kind of stuff. And they think they're God. Um, but I don't think they are like thanking him like, Oh, I prayed to God or Jesus or Allah. And he gave me this. It's more of like, a th- I'm grateful that this was his plan for me. I'm sure. undeserving rather yeah. than, thank God I killed that virgin. So now I can be rich. Yeah. Well, when you put it that way, I'm like completely anti God now. Cause this, 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 this plan sucks, man. Like replan this, this is awful. It's been pretty good. It's frankly, I've never missed a meal clearly. And so even my worst moments have been better than like 98% of historical people on this planet. So I <sighs> personally feel pretty good. You fucking high roaded me. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> because the, the Holy spirit speaking through me, I wasn't planning on talking about Jesus, but <laughs> now I'm like, God's watching this. So I really got to like, I, I hate Satan. He's lame. <laughs> His, dude, Satan sucks he can kick rocks he's a defiler he's a liar he, he will he already lost like enjoy your fun while you can buddy you can't get me friend okay <laughs> i'm claimed baby is your uh, are you gonna is this like uh, when they look back on your career is this night the night that you're gonna have turned into a gospel uh country musician no it'll probably That's be like in, in three years if i get really famous to be like, do you remember when Caleb de- denounced God? <laughs> it's the only episode that got lost from real life sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, after the podcast, real life sci-fi was like, listen, do you actually want to be famous? Because we know a crossroad. <laughs> we can give you some stuff, man. Memphis ain't far. Start driving. You know, you did, but Willie, you did mention something which is like, because I don't, I like the bible and everything is 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 so like kind of corporeal that that i don't believe it because it's like how would any human ever i know it's supposed to be god wrote it through people or whatever what 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 makes me think that might not be the case is if you saw the devil and you didn't believe in this stuff if you're nihilistic like me and then the devil comes to you and he's like, hey, hey, give me your soul. Yeah. Oh, I'll make you a million dollars. And then you're like, whoa, that's fucked up. I just met the devil. It makes it makes more sense to me that people would also then see God and be able to translate his his teachings into the Bible. You know what I mean? I this yeah. is a very long road to get to maybe the Bible isn't completely fic- fictitious. I think the the by if we're we're operating on the assumption that the devil is real just for the sake of this theory sure um i think the idea that he would come to you as a red man with horns and a pitchfork and be like i can give you money probably not the case i mean the, the devil from a bit but how hilarious that would be though i it, then it's hilarious when they go to hell and they're like how'd this happen it's like you met the pitchfork guy what are you talking about <laughs> yeah, did he look like know, he lived in a rooms to go you like, trusted oh. that guy he had horns no if the I'm devil comes i was to just you, getting a slurpee yeah, if the devil comes to you he's gonna i mean he was the most beautiful angel in heaven before he fell like he's gonna be your best friend he's gonna make you feel great like why else would he be so such a good deceiver? He's not going to put all his cards in front of you. Was what do you think Elvis is? What was Elvis's guy? The general or whatever? The, yeah, the colonel. Guy? The colonel. You think he was the devil? 
Uh, I think just from stealing from everybody is probably the most demonic it's thing. It's just a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, appropriation is the most demonic thing there is. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? But no, I, I, maybe. I wasn't there. I didn't meet the Kern. I know that my dad is my like biggest supporter. I don't think he would mess with Satan to get me famous. But maybe the Colonel is not a man of such convictions. Wait, is your dad your manager? No, no, but he's my father, so he'll always supersede any position or role. He's he's the greatest man I know. So if my dad oh, says wow. something, it's it's law. Oh, I'm jealous of your relationship with your father. <laughs> We'd love to have you guys over That's sometimes. Great. He's a he's a he's a sweet man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, is he still in Georgia? He's in Georgia, but you know what? We can we can go wherever you guys are. We can, I'm we can going to Nashville. Florida uh, on the 28th. You can we can meet up in the Panhandle there. Do you want him to take you fishing? I don't like fishing. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. It's because you've never done it with my dad. Deep I'm can we do I'm deep sea for fishing? Fishermen. I throw rocks. I run around. I look for <laughs> deep sea I'm... fishing is the way that anyone. If you don't like fishing, you like deep sea fishing. It's the funnest. I, thing. Well, just... I, well, I wanted to last time I was in Florida. I have family out there, and we were going to go deep sea fishing, but the 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 ocean was too angry that day. So well, you know who do. you know who was a great fisherman. And could calm the seas, the Lord Jesus Christ. So maybe that's your missing ingredient for your. You're vision. leaning. You're leaning too hard into it now. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to go full Osteen in a minute. That's demonic. God oh, wants yeah. you. God wants you rich. <laughs> oh fuck, dude. Um. Okay, we should wrap it up. I don't. We got a couple minutes here. So if if there's anything we haven't covered, now's the time. What do you think, just, Willie? I really want, real go quick, ahead. gentlemen. I, I just want to, firstly, for everyone listening and watching, thanks for accepting me. And to you two gentlemen, thanks for having me. It's easily been the most fun conversation I've had in like a recorded format. But I also just want to say that my new album, Southern Galactic, which is available on all streaming platforms, was not inspired by any dark, evil presence whatsoever. <laughs> so if you're looking for music, and you're like, I want to make sure Satan isn't using this as a tool to get into my heart and soul. You can listen to Southern Galactic right now. Um, it's not a gospel album, um, but he inspired it. So that that's that's my rule. And that's also why I'm not famous, because the, like, the, he calls me twice a day and he's like, you ready to sell it yet? And I'm like, no, I can <laughs> still pay rent for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting by. <laughs> I uh I listened to the first six songs on your album and I I just honestly cannot tell you how Im impressed I was. I they were all fucking great, dude. Like Silverado's really good. A lot it's weird because it has um uh, uh you have songs that have like uh some synth in them. I'm feeling like cars inspiration, a lot of modern stuff mm. and and I'm just like, dude, I I listened to six songs and I love six songs, dude. Um, dude, thank you. I, I hope and, and uh, they were all different and unique enough too, to where they didn't all sound the same. I, I don't know. It was, it was really good, man. And I just got to say real quick, first of all, thank you a ton. Um, but I owe like all of it to Titanic Sinclair who produced the record. Um, that was another, dare I say God moment for me was I was just getting out of the the bad spot that I was in that I mentioned earlier. And I was like, man, I got to do something with my life. And I got to do something that's that's good and cool. And, you know, makes me feel like I'm really doing something. And I've been a fan of Titanic Sinclair for like 10 years now. Uh, and I reached out to him and was like, this isn't going to happen. But just as an exercise, I want to let myself get rejected. And he just came back and was like, yeah, I want to, I want to be a part of it. I want to make it happen. And, um, one of the, I'm not a person who like listens to my own music or, uh, I'm not enough of a narcissist to be an artist. Really. It kind of is a disservice that I don't think I'm the greatest thing ever. Um, but I'm pretty good, but I don't think, I, I don't think that's, a, I'm, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Like, well, it's just, you know, I live in Nashville. So everyone's like, I am the future and I'd like to be, but this this time is the, the first time I've been able to listen to something and just love it so much, greatly due to the work that he did. So I'm very happy to hear you say that. And it was kind of, I wanted to make country music that you didn't have to like country to enjoy, but also that didn't just move away completely and, 
you know, just be a pop record and call it country. Like I want hardcore country fans who don't listen to anything past 1985 to be able to listen to it and enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't see how it cannot get huge, man. Honestly, like it, I, I'm, a, I'm not even halfway through the album. Wait, know? hang on. I'm sorry. Were you the runner up on American Idol? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so you're like, you're like, you're like pretty famous. I'm relatively known. Um, not really for my music, more just for being so handsome. But yeah, no, I'm. <laughs> I'm okay, super, well, super famous. We have to talk. All right, I, I, we got to end the episode. We're gonna do the bonus episode. I want to talk more about like what you would sell your soul for, but cool. I really want to talk about American Idol now. Yeah, please. I guess I should have looked you up before we started recording. <laughs> can, I can I can I tell you truly? I'm so happy you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? Yeah. Tell us about it. What was that experience like? I don't want to. I don't. I'm not going to do that shit. I'm going to do the like dark, the dark side of America. Yeah. Idol. What's really? What's really going on? What I was Gwen Stefani whispering to you in the, <laughs> yeah. in the corner? I mean, it is like a cattle call, just like push, push, push. It's uh, it was quite the summer camp, boys, and your patrons will hear all about it. All right, great. So stick around for that. Go to patreon.com slash real life sci fi. Caleb, thank you so much for doing this and being here. Uh, the album is called Southern Galactic. You can get it now anywhere that you can get music. Um, nice. Any other plugs that you want to throw out there before we wrap up? All my social media platforms are Caleb Lee Music. And if you look me up through this, message me and tell me. That would be really cool. And I'll let the boys know. And I would radical. be very surprised if that happens, but I, yes, get, I guarantee it happens. The code word is penguin. DM me. Oh, yeah. penguin. <laughs> I will be looking. <laughs> and um, no. And again, like, I really just want to thank you guys. It's, it's really been a blast. I'm excited for the bonus episode and it's really cool. Uh, just the, the whole energy that y'all set up here and, and thanks for having me. And it's been a blast and uh, much, much peace and much love. You're too gracious. Thank you so much for doing it. Willie, any plugs? Go to Willie Bad Movies on Instagram. Do that. I make fake movie posters. Go on. Yeah, I don't have any either. Just GI Throw. Just just watch out for GI Throw. It's my new, it's my new thing where I launch oh. GI Joes out of mousetraps and I'm going to make a whole show about it. So that's my thing. But it's like a year and it's, it's going to be a while. I got to do stuff. Thanks everyone for listening. Go to patreon.com slash real life sci fi. Join us on twitch.tv slash real life sci fi on Monday nights. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you again, Caleb. And uh, just remember because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye, bye.